Hi, thanks for watching. So today's video is going to be a bit different from the usual types of videos I would be doing. I asked if you'd rather see a video um, about Scotland or Iceland as I was just looking through old footage and I kind of figured that or those were the two places that I could make a, a, a good video about that has, you know, a story with it. Um, Scotland won the vote, so doing a video in Scotland. Um, and what comes to mind for me is my kind of experiences during 2019. Um, so it's not, it's not a happy story, but it's a story that I feel, you know, I should tell. Um, so here we go. So I just moved um, from London back to Scotland at the start of January. And, you know, I was moved back in with my parents, so I was kind of set on back in, I'd got the camper van. And yeah, life was kind of, life was good. Um, I was loving being at home, uh, loving being around my parents again. Um, really, really enjoying myself. And uh, towards the end of January, I had to go back down to London to finish off some work. So my dad had dropped me off at the train station one morning. I got the train down. And you know, I remember that day so well. It, it was such a such a really, uh, such a beautiful sunrise that morning, going down the east coast on the train. Um, I got to my hotel, I was staying near um, Tower Bridge, and I was getting ready um, to go and meet one of my friends in London. And I got a phone call, and um, it was my mum, and she said, your dad's had a heart attack. So I was just immediately, right, 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 uh, so I'm coming home. And so I immediately packed up and started heading back to King's Cross. And I never, I never managed to get to King's Cross when I got a second phone call um, tell me from well, it was my auntie, she was just in tears saying, sorry, uh, he, he's gone. And it was just, you know, it was so surreal. It didn't really sink in. It was the longest train journey of my, my life back to Scotland. Um, you know, you just look, going through old pictures of my dad, just, uh, it didn't feel real. And yeah, it was definitely the toughest time I've had in my life over the last year. Still coming to terms with it. I had, you know, a long time off work. Um, but, you know, there, there, there's been positives as well, as hard as it's been. And that's kind of what I'm going to touch on in this video. And kind of kind of focus on one day at Sylvan and why Sylvan for me is a special mountain. Um, so I'm kind of sorry it's not a happy day or happy, happy video, but yeah, just if you want to watch it, here you go. In the days following my dad's death, I just wanted to get away from everything. Two of my best friends said they would come with me up to the highlands in my camper van. We stopped off at the Corrie Shalach Gorge, which I guess is Scotland's kind of answer to the Grand Canyon. There's not really anything else like it in Scotland. It was in the middle of winter, the conditions were perfect and there was nobody else around. We arrived at Loch Inver that night and got a bit drunk. The next afternoon we woke up, looked at Sylvan and its wintry condition. None of my friends had the right equipment, so we aborted. So I remember getting back from Sylvan with my my best mates Stevie and Aki and we went into my house and my sister wasn't well. 
Um, she's epileptic. Went to see her and she was like, she said to me, I'm not, I'm not feeling well. Go get mum. So I kind of went and got my mum and just panicked straight away because by the time I got back through, she was having a seizure. And uh, my two friends were brilliant. Uh, they helped her through it. I couldn't really watch. I'd never seen her in all these years. I'd never seen her have one. When I kind of seen it, I just freaked out, just backed off. Uh, I called the ambulance and things. Uh, I dealt with that, but I couldn't watch her, you know, just uh, wriggle around and stuff. It was horrible. And the next week or so was was pretty bad. Um, she just couldn't, she couldn't like get out of having these seizures. She's had them before, but usually there'd be kind of a couple and then that would be it. I think just with the stress and the trauma of my dad, um, it was just over and over again. And the, the, the recovery meds weren't working. And you know, that was scary seeing her struggling to breathe and having the ambulance out time and time again when she was eventually kept in the hospital for a while and then she was back out. Uh, it was, she, she was in good hands with my family, but I just couldn't watch it. After losing like my dad, it just, it was like, it was as if you're just kind of watching someone else go and I just couldn't handle that. So I just went away myself. Back up north, I didn't have a plan. I think I got to Gerlock. And I remember I was looking over to Sky, and it was beautiful. So I thought, right, I'll go to Sky. And Sky for me is one of those places, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but uh, these days it's very touristic. But in February, you're totally fine. It's, uh, it was beautiful then. Um, clear skies, very windy, still cold. And I just explored the sky, I think, for a day or two. I think after Sky, I went to Loch U and Pool U and a place called Cove. And just when I was thinking about it, uh, just earlier, I was like, with the kind of situation we're in, I was in this place called Cove. And it's one of the only places in Scotland I've been to where you're, you're reminded of the war and the hard times that people had. Um, people set sail from here to the Arctic, to Russia, to supply goods. Some of them didn't return. Um, and you'll see it was like the fortresses or the, the kind of gun towers or whatever you call them just on the coastline. And I still, after I'd seen that, I'd went elsewhere, but I still wanted to go back to Sylvan. So I decided to head north, the far north. and I was hoping to make it up to Loch Inver and that the weather would be good. And eventually I did. Um, I got to Loch Inver the night before and parked up and took some time lapses and the weather was good, the sky was beautiful. Very windy but it was clear, whereas you know, the two weeks before when I went up 
it was proper winter and it was like 18 degrees one of these days in February which is quite unheard of. So the morning I got up early to climb so then today it's it was the most amazing sunrise I've ever witnessed and I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to have seen many sunrises all over the world in some really amazing locations and I'm grateful for that but none of them compared to what I was seeing up at Loch Inver and looking all over towards Sylvan and Canisp um, I was just blown away, I couldn't believe it, what my eyes were seeing. Uh, I just got the, the drone and the camera and I just wanted to make sure I could capture it. And it still doesn't do it justice when I look back, I've tried to... It, it captured it pretty similar to what it was, but it was so much nicer. Um, and it was a good walk in, I, just, I was just listening to music, just got my head down. Got to the base of it in no time and then it was up. And it was a really, it was quite an emotional summit, if I'm being honest. You know, I'd been thinking of my dad the whole way and, and my sister. them in my mind and it was just such a beautiful day I think I met, I met two other people uh, but no I had the place to myself the summit to myself I would really like to thank everyone that's watching this, that's took the time out of their day to kind of watch this. It does mean a lot. Um, I want to thank all my friends and family that were kind of there for me during 2019. And all, to all the people I met, all the new people I met during 2019, um, met some amazing people. Um, I didn't really always tell this story or explain why I had so much time off work. I might have kind of told a white lie here or there, but um, this is the story. But yeah, I, a really, really bad time, but also good from another perspective, meeting a lot of new people. Um, strengthening existing relationships with family and friends it's it's been a, incredible in some ways as sad as it is um, i know i'm not the only person in the world that's went through something like this i know there's far worse things going on but just wanted to take the time to say thanks for watching and um i think the next video i'm going to do it's going to be on <laughs> iceland that's kind of the only other place i've got a lot of excess footage from that I can go back and tell a story, much happier stories, stories of Mexicans taking uh, acid on glaciers and <laughs> things like that. Um, a lot of good times there in Iceland. Um, it's one of my favourite places to go. But anyway, probably rambled on enough. So cheers for watching it. Peace.